I'd, I'd say that it's a uh, very good value for money. That's dangerous. It's freaking me out. Good day, you absolute wonderful people out there. Today, well, what we are looking at, a bit of a surprise, really. I can't believe that this is happening. When I reviewed this drone, and then I checked the price. It is, at the moment of filming this, 150 US dollars. You freedom people out there, I think it's even cheaper, like 147 or something like that. It is absolutely ridiculous. What we are talking about, it is the Diatone Taycan 2.5. I didn't want to like this drone, I gotta be honest. Uh, until I flew it, it flew a lot better than I thought. And then I checked the price, and it is flying at a drone that would be worth at least $200, maybe a little bit more. A very fun, rad drone. So what we're going to be doing in this video, we're going to be putting putting it through its paces. We're going to be talking about it on the bench, breaking it down, look at the text and the specs, what makes up this drone, and then the fun part. We're going to go out to the field, we're going to the in-laws, which is a great place to test this. There's lots of trees, small gaps to shoot as well. We're going to be cruising around with this. We've got Wingman Jono out there. We kick it around a little bit because you can see it's got these big, beautiful ducks around the outside. Jono even crashes it into himself, which makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable and it's just revving up, but he was completely fine. I tried to fly it under my car a whole bunch of stuff and we pretty much find out is this going to be a good drone for you and is it worth the $150 price point and let me tell you yeah it kind of is actually for this bit so um Let's do it. Let's just dive right in. I guess some of the things first, as a bit of an overview, you can see what it is. It is a little abducted 2.5 inch props. There's a few little caveats I want to say though. I do not have the original props that go on this. So whether I lost them or whether this is a uh, prototype version that I got, uh, I can't be 100% sure. I've had this for quite a while, but of course uh, I didn't make, so I had a bit of a hiatus from making videos. So now uh, I don't know where those props are. I'm sorry, Diatone. Uh, if you didn't send them in the first place, that's not good. If I lost them, I'm terribly sorry. So I do have some little Avan props on here and I've got to say, I think it would fly even better uh, with some of the HQ props they send with these. So keep that in mind. The second thing as well, one thing I did change, uh, I put an XT60 on here and put a uh, TBS long range receiver in here or a crossfire because look, it's just I wanted to use my Tango 2, and also this suited my batteries. However, I think a, a little T, a TX, XT30 as well, uh, it's more than enough for this type of 2.5 little quad. But like I said, in the overview, what it is, it's a little ducted quad that is kind of made for putting on a little uh, Insta360 Go or something like that. This is a noisy table. Um, cruising around, getting some cool shots, whether you want to film somewhere that's it's kind of like a mix between a filming drone and also a fun drone that's going to be safe at the same time. What I do like about this, one versus some of the others are some of those larger cine whoop style drones they've got those big plastic ducts or bits of carbon on the outside there is hardly any carbon besides the center fuselage uh, right here on the outside we've got plastic and foam it's relatively light as well let me find my scales we'll stick it on there all right so let's tear this off and let's see Tear. Hopefully this is going to be in shot in the roof cam. It is coming in. This is with my XD60 and the adapter as well. It's 178 grams. So uh, it does, I don't think you're going to be doing too much damage if you crash into something. The top speed, well, you got to remember, it's a ducted drone. It does get affected by the wind a little bit, but it is a lot of fun. Far more fun than I thought, which is the surprising part. So I couldn't get wait, get wait. I couldn't wait to get back here and make a video about it, especially for that price. Oh, some of the extras. You get this big carry case. Thanks very much, Diatone. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. You do get a couple of little extra plastic uh, colored rims, though, if you want to bling it out just a little bit. You know what? By default, I want these uh, pretty colors in there. I want the rainbow drone, but do I have enough energy and can I be bothered? to switch these out? Probably not. However, it is nice. If you happen to absolutely smash this thing somehow, I don't know how you'd be going fast enough to break one of these or how high you would have to fall from because it does feel very, very robust. I mean, you got four spares, which is a uh, big thumbs up there. I'm all for getting spares when you order a quad, especially for this price. But, oh, and you also get these little like GoPro kind of mounts as well where they, I should take them out of the bag. I didn't put a GoPro on here. I don't think the power to weight ratio is really gonna be suiting a GoPro. It's gonna be much better to the Insta360 Go. But anyway, that goes on there. Bob's your uncle or your quad's ready to rock and roll. You're gonna be filming with those. Thanks very much. Nice little injection molded plastic parts. Now, let's get onto the components. Let's look at the nitty gritty of what is inside this. So of course, you've got your large frame made out of plastic with the center fuselage made of two carbon plates. I did really like how 
you can simply unscrew these four screws here and the uh, the top comes off and it means you can access your middle stack. However, if you do need to do some work on there, like when I was soldering in this receiver, it's not the easiest. So it was a bit of a pain to, it wasn't as easy, I should say, as some of the other drones. You don't have very much space to work with. Starting at the outside in, of course, I lost the props, but I think they're 1404 motors at 5,000 kV. Uh, yeah, 1404, yeah, 5,000 kV motors. I was running mine on a 4S850. It flew beautifully. Towards the middle, we have our little micro Mamba stack. It's like 25 amps. It's just an awesome little reliable drone. That The Mamba and Diatone have been making some great stuff. There is a reason why Mamba is probably one of the most recommended value stacks out there. It just works. A lot of people like it. Very easy to set up. Of course, it's rocking Betaflight, and for you newcomers out there, Betaflight is the firmware that 99% of our drones run, and it flies a very, very smooth, no, no wobbles, no oscillations or anything like that. Uh, I think it came with a Foxy, a Lollipop antenna, but I swapped mine out. Uh, I've got a little Axie on it. And you can see on the back here too, I had a little Crossfire receiver, and I do like that it uh, gives you the option, where it's, it's already made to put a Crossfire in here, which I think A+. Plus. Well done, the guys at Diatone. Moving on, let's talk about the design of the thing, and this way this drone is special. I guess it really does rip around around uh, for the size that it is while feeling protected as well. You've got those big ducks on there. Uh, it doesn't feel like you're going to be damaging anything. A very, very safe drone. You have to, if you're going to be, I guess, flying this near a car show, because it is completely encased in foam, you're going to be very unlucky if you happen to scratch a car. Uh, the only way you're probably going to be damaging something else besides the drone is if you do a full-on frontal impact, because that's where you've got these little aluminium parts at the front, which is offering you pretty insane camera protection. So you're going to get lucky to not only break the drone but also you're not going to be damaging anything else you could do this for like real estate shoots where you're worried about marking the walls or the tvs or something this nice soft spongy foam on the outside it's just going to bounce off anything and it's uh that's kind of what these drones are made for cruising around getting some cool footage going to through tight spaces while being safe of course the other bit of the uh design that i've got to give props to that's a good little pun there you can see uh it is a pusher quad which basically means it is pushing the thrust well the motors are on upside down we've got the motors on the top with the prop underneath that is not how we normally fly most of the time you've got the motor underneath with the prop sitting on the top so this is what we call a pusher configuration but it flies great the pros and the cons well things I like and things I don't like are uh I love the price. Let's get that out of the way. It flies better than I thought it was going to. Um, it's it's nice and safe. Uh, I guess some of the cons, the things I don't like, it can be a little bit tricky to work in. If you've got a solder in your receiver, it's not quite as easy. Um, oh, another part of design as well. It has this little slit right here. Hopefully uh, that's going to be in shot. If you need to plug in the USB, you need to push it through the inside of this duct. I learned that the hard way. Um, yeah, USB access, it actually goes through the inside of the ducts. There's none of the other ones have a little cutout here, so this front one, uh, but you can see there's a little cutout here, which means you simply slide your USB through that and then you can connect it up to beta flight. Uh, some of the other cons, it is very, very loud. It sounds like a turbine jet engine when you're going to be taking off. It's not gonna be hauling a GoPro because, well, I don't think it's gonna be hauling a GoPro very well because it is not probably, it's not that it's not efficient or it has the most power, but it doesn't have the most power, it's just, I think that would be too much weight for here. That would make it feel a little bit too sluggish. And then uh, probably the other bit as well, it is affected by the wind. So if you're flying around in windy environments, this is gonna, because it's so, uh, I guess, light with a, that's a lot of surface area, right? That's a lot of drag. It's gonna get caught by the wind as well. It's not gonna be a few crazy freestyle pilots out there. Don't buy this thinking you're gonna be doing crazy freestyle. Can you still fly it around and have fun? Absolutely. Is it gonna be your top tier freestyle drone? No, it's too small. It gets affected by the wind and it's not designed to rip around a GoPro. It is designed for flying around, having fun, doing some filming uh, while being safe. I can't stress that safe bit enough. And plus, also uh, another bit I want to stress, 150 bucks. Are you kidding me? I can't believe we can get a drone like this for $150 that flies this well. Now, let's do it. Let's go out to the field. I'm going to show you some DVR. And the reason I'm showing you DVR is because I think it's important. I know I'm saying it's a filming drone, but that's too easy to put a stabilized bit of filming on here or anything else like that and say, hey, look at this amazing footage. I wanna show you the footage that you're gonna get back from the drone. And then you can imagine putting whatever camera you've got on top of this. And uh, I think the DVR is gonna be a little bit more important as well. So we'll cruise around, show you what it's like, show you what wingman Jono thinks of this bad boy. And then uh, yeah, just wrap it up and have some fun with this drone. So let's jump out to the flying field in three, two, Two, one. Alrighty, out here in the field. A glorious day to spend 150 bucks. Can you believe it? The Taycan 2.5 from Diatone. 
got some nice foamy parts there. We've got Wingman Jono behind the camera. We're going to take this for a spin and something a little bit different. Like these drones, they're made for a little bit of, uh, I would say, exploring. I'm not going to be carrying a GoPro. I've got some different props on here because, believe it or not, I think this was an early prototype version. It didn't come with the props. And uh, so I've got some props on here that aren't suited for it. It would fly better with some other props. I'm sure some people are going to get a little bit triggered. Triggered. Well, uh, you can leave me some hate down below. But uh, let's do it. Let's have some fun and talk about how this goes for 150 bucks. Show you some DVR because that's what we're cruising around with. Show what the actual footage looks like. You can imagine it with a GoPro on the top or an Insta360. I know that's what Jono wants to put on the top, one of those little go things or something like that. But let's have some fun, rip it around, and then uh, see what wingman Jono thinks about it as well. And I put TBS in it as well. So uh, if you did want to, we could do some, some long ranges. But let's have some fun, show you some DVR in three, two, one. So here we are cruising around and I put that little bit in at the start there, that little extra shot so you could hear just how noisy this is. Don't expect a bit of a silent drone. It just definitely sounds like you are ramping up some turbines or something around there, but let's do it. Talk about it. Characteristics, very, very easy to control. And I've got to say, no slouch as well for a 2.5 inch drone that is carrying that much. You can see it kind of is hooking around. It looks very, very stable in the air, extremely easy to fly. And man, the camera that they've put in here, not only does it kind of handle the brake up pretty well so this is probably the worst place in the entire property to try to fly through but right here check it out the colors look gorgeous the blues and greens looks very very nice so cruising this thing around it's actually quite a pleasant fpv experience as well now i want you to imagine you strapped yourself a gopro or i should say a naked gopro an insta 360 cam to the front you still can do a tiny little bit of acro and you did see for its weight it definitely did have a little bit of pop like you saw there when i blipped the throttle but its main purpose i truly think is just for cruising around having some fun while getting some footage. You might take this thing to a car show. You might take this thing doing some real estate shots. You might be flying around some indoor offices or maybe some basketball games or filming some people, you know, just mucking around doing an activity. You want a safe drone that you can put near them that's not going to freak them out. They're not going to worry about getting cut. In a moment, I think uh, Johnny gives it a kick as well uh, and he also crashes it into himself, which you would have seen at the very start of the video. So he has a lot of faith in it. But yeah, all in all, I got to say, for 150 bucks, it's not going to be your freestyle go GoPro Ripper. It's not going to be your racer. It does get affected by the wind, but what you are going to get with those things aside, it's a kind of a different style of drone. It's a really cool, fun, and I would almost say large backyard cruiser that a great explorer, if you put a GoPro on there, or sorry, if you put a naked uh, little action camera on there or something, you're going to get some awesome shots. It's just, uh, it's just a lot of fun. There's a little bit of pop as well, but yeah, and $150, very safe. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to hurt anyone, and I'm kind of surprised. I didn't think I was going to like this drone as much as I did. I didn't think it was going to fly as well as it did. And the biggest surprise, I didn't think that it was going to be 150 bucks. So right here, Jono gives it a kick. Okay, there you go. And he kicks it off to side. He gave it a bit of a spin. Don't do this, because then that freaked me out. And I was worried it was going to crash into me. But all in all, I think it's a pretty cool little drone. What we should do, let's hand it over to Wingman Jono and get his thoughts as well. Radio Wingman Jono. I don't know why I'm singing, <laughs> but here we are in the field. COVID safe. We are flying around with the Taycan. It's 150 bucks, mate. So from Diatone, yeah. what do you think about that? That's uh, pretty cheap, man. Very, very cheap. I also yeah. changed the XT. I put an XT60 on there just because I'm lazy and I prefer XT60s. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. Yep, just yep. need some XT30 batteries. Uh, to go, yeah, man. That's, just it, keep... that's it. Yeah, yeah. All right, what do you reckon? Uh, first impressions, man. I, I, I like how it looks in terms of like the color and stuff like that. Makes it look really nice. Uh, high vis, so we'll be able to find it when we crash it yes. somewhere silly. Yes. Which is good. Um, nice robust camera protection there, which is cool because we get. Um, I feel like we're going to get into the thick of it. This one, we want to get amongst trees and stuff like yeah, that. We man, want to be able to bump into some things. Loving, loving it. What did it look like in the air when you were watching it just cruise around? No, it just um, it, it just looked smooth and cruisy. It's just this just nice straight level. Wasn't too much like fluctuation in terms of height and things. It was just dead straight. Like yep. yeah, which is uh, probably what you want is just some nice control and get in and out of trees or you know if you want to do an indoor location, nice stable sort of thing. You can fly around in indoors a bit and um. And You've been talking about Insta360 Go, like that's what you want to put on here. Yeah, that's I'd like to try that on there. I feel like it would be like a, a good hauler for one of those, it's nice and small, and you'd be able to take it like indoors and get some nice 360 footage, like fly-throughs of things. Uh, it's a, you know, a nice popular thing to be doing at the moment, like in terms of uh, getting your videos and stuff like that. All right. Yeah. Should, um, we, uh, should we put it through its paces? 
Yeah, you, for sure. Do you want to go? That's what. Yeah, I yeah. Ask. Of course, I, want I don't to think go. I've ever asked you that before. <laughs> no, 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 no I don't do want to fly it. Man. <laughs> Uh, it already is going, bro. John, I gotta say, mate, your hair is out of control. Yeah, I told you I'm trying to make up for Granger. Granger got a haircut. Okay. <laughs> right now, this thing is pretty loud, I should say, as well. Yeah, people are definitely gonna know that you're around, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> that's probably is a combination of those props, though. Yeah, we are using those really aggressive um, right. Emacs ones, so. But how does it feel? Is it, is it controllable? Yeah, very smooth. Like, That's... I'm just cruising along. Whoop, I'm losing a bit of a uh, reception there. Yep, you are quite through some thick bushes. Yeah, I am you might need to turn around. Yep. I am turning around because I'm getting thick in it. If yeah, you I'm look running through really there, we're going behind and... a fountain, behind about six bushes and shrubs. So... And running real low. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, in terms of like, yeah, staying low, keeping a little bit of pace and uh, cruising through objects, um, Definitely feels okay. Yeah, it's um. Give it a little pop when you uh, bring it out to the open. Oh, out to the open. Okay. <laughs> or there, or there. I can just pop it up through the thick of the trees. No yep. worries. Yeah, Maybe give it there's a punch. some branches. Above. Go, go for it. Oh yeah, it's got a bit, doesn't it? It's not um. It's not uh not wanting for yeah, particularly for this style of like uh frame and like size props. It's uh, not wanting for gas. All right. Uh, and what did you think? We we got my in-laws walking around out there. You're fine. Okay. It's, uh... <laughs> Uh, we'll try not to hit oh, it's good. It's all good. He oh, is the go. most super cool dude. He couldn't care less if we're flying around. Um, what do you think about for 150 bucks? 150 bucks, pretty good value, man. To be honest, like yeah, like it, particularly if you're like, um, like I was saying, if you got the Insta 360 Go, that real light 360 cam, like you strap that on here. You got yourself one of those nice little like, uh, like uh, video rigs. Whoa, that was close. Sorry. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you're doing that on purpose or not. Uh, yep. A little bit of a breeze picked up. In okay, it. yeah. Being so it's, effect, style, it's affected by wind yeah, a little bit? Being the style of frame that it is, yes, I can feel it picking up a little bit of the wind. Do you feel safe, though, flying that thing around, like if it bumped into somebody with the foam protectors on the outside and that sort of stuff? Do you oh, have more confidence that yeah, you're not going to injure anybody? All right, we're still flying around. My GoPro battery died, but we got some spares. The, uh, the turbines are in full effect. <laughs> but final thoughts, Johnny? Uh, yeah, like it feels like a nice safe thing to fly and yeah, it's got a little bit of speed where you want it But not too much to make it like unhandleable and yeah, it's maneuverable enough to get in and out of some tight spots Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say that it's a very good value yeah, for money right. That's dangerous You're freaking me out <laughs> And it's safe <laughs> uh, And you can just kick the thing too, like that's yeah. not going to break The only thing you might have to worry about is if the battery strap comes undone or something like that, but it's yeah. pretty much golden. But uh, in terms of what you're saying before the GoPro uh, battery cut out, you know, I do feel safe about flying it. Like as you saw just then, I crashed it into myself. I don't really feel like I'm going to get like, you know. You'd have to be, even if this was flat, don't arm this because it would freak yeah. me out. But even if that came flat against your leg or something like this, uh, it's not actually The only way you're going to get it is if you put your fingers in there. Yeah, don't do that. Which is, <laughs> yeah, so it, like no problem like having it like bump into me, bump into a person or something. Like it's, it's, yeah, like, uh, yeah, very happy with it, man. Like feels nice. safe, feels nice to fly. All right, nice. Thanks, Jack. No worries. <laughs> Radio, so there it is. There's my review of uh, the Diaco, Diatone Taycan, or however you pronounce it, a little 2.5 fully ducted foam fun FPV drone. I mean, for the 150 buck price, it is an absolute steal. I can't believe it. I don't expect to be flying around with a heavy GoPro then, maybe a naked GoPro on this thing, or an Insta360 Go. So if you're into filming and you've got one of those cameras for the price, it is an absolute steal. Otherwise, uh, if you want to do some more outdoor acro flying, and that sort of stuff it's not going to be up your alley you've got like some little uh you could be going five inch nazgul if you want to carry a full gopro and uh, as far as indoor goes well it's not going to feel like a mob six or anything but it is still very controllable so anyway i'd love to know what do you guys think what do you think about the price i mean if it's up around the 200 buck mark it becomes less value but for the 150 dollars or 147 whatever it is it is an absolute steal so check the link down below because i'm not too sure what the price will be when you're watching this other than that subscribe for more fpv related content I hope you have an ama absolutely amazing day, and as always, happy flying. Just doing some filming in front of the camera. Okay, sorry. So who should we subscribe to? Uh, Malice Vex. Yeah, subscribe to Malice Vex. Alright, okay, I'll ring you later, bro. Alright, okay. Catch ya.